Happy Sunday evening, everyone. Hope you all had a great Easter weekend. Thanks for checking into our Sunday version of the Trade to Black podcast. I'm your host, Shad Dales. A lot of price movement in this industry this week. A lot of price action, to say the least. And we're going to highlight basically a few companies that was on everybody's mind this week. As well, the NASDAQ saw the least amount of volatility on its exchange, the lowest in over two years this week. What gives? Why is that? Well, there's no better person to bring in than Dan the Chartman here in tonight's podcast. So let's begin first. Bring in TDR co-host Anthony Varel. Happy Easter Sunday. Hope you had a great weekend and hope you had uh, fun with uh, the house of the mouse. Yeah, it did. It was great. Um, it was a great week last week. I mean, a lot of volatility um, in cannabis stocks. I mean, I know the NASDAQ was obviously at a relatively low um, degree of volatility, but I mean, yeah, Canopy was swinging, Tilray was swinging. U.S. cannabis on Wednesday got a huge bid going into yep. uh, the close with a lot of double digit gains. And I mean, hopefully we get an announcement here sometime soon and yep. we start to see some real aggressive moves to the upside. Yeah. All right. Well, tonight's podcast, we're going to look at basically performance of the past week, how things closed on Thursday and what we can anticipate going into tomorrow morning. So let's bring in the expert, of course, Mr. Dan, the chart man here on tonight's podcast. Good to see you. Uh, happy uh, Easter weekend. Hope you had some fun. Did you get some yard work done in North Carolina this weekend? How was the weather? Yeah, well, this was great. You know, up getting towards spring and even pushing towards summer. It's real, real nice and hot. Yeah. What are you making of all this uh, drama that's going on with your uh, industry rumors from Washington as we keep bringing this on? But we saw a lot of price action this week. And uh, what's your general thoughts over the past week or so now that earnings season's done? I mean, I love it. Just as you mentioned, the NASDAQ is is dead in terms of not doing anything. And so yeah. I'm you know, telling everybody, OK, <laughs> you know, we used to be able to focus on indices and, and things like that. But now we got to go to the small, volatile things. So that's you know, crypto stocks and cannabis is getting all my attention this entire past week because, you know, the, the ETFs just aren't giving it to me. So if I want to be day trading, you know, Canopy had, had all the volatility and from a swing perspective on the U.S. side, some nice moves. So uh, that's, you know, an attention attractor for traders like myself. Yeah, well, good to know. So let's dive into that. Let's first jump on the Canadian bandwagon and see where things were performed. So stock that everybody is watching very closely this week, Canopy Growth, which was down early on in the week, as much as 30%. And uh, basically they flipped that around by come Wednesday and it was up over 30%. But what did you see going into the close on Thursday? And uh, more importantly for people watching this now, what you can anticipate going into uh, tomorrow morning? Yeah, definitely a little bit cautious. Uh, we had you know a, a good move up on the morning and kept the party going as far as hitting fresh higher highs. We had a, an extended hours high from pre-market at 1040 and we didn't quite make it to that level and you can see this roll over here. This is a uh, a rising wedge, which is a, yep. a bear exhaustion pattern. It's just when, you know, you keep grinding higher, but then you run out of steam and there's nobody left to buy there. And you can see how hard we rolled over. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you're going up hard, you're going to pull back hard. That's a 20% yeah. drop in just a couple of hours. And so, you know, that's enough for me to say, okay, time to be a little bit patient. As I mentioned, I've been day trading this one very often. But what I do know is, you know, again, without a headline, Eventually, these names can very easily pull back 50% once the party stops, once this momentum stops. So I do not want to be holding any bags on these Canadian names. So just, you know, for me, it's get in, get my little profit and get out. So uh, if on this uh, Monday here, if we break 813, daily consolidation will be underway. And then that will have me patiently waiting for hourly oversold conditions to be scouting a, a next bounce trade. So all about 813 support in the short term and as far as resistance. On any bounce, if we do not break 1013, it's just an hourly lower high. So it was enough momentum into the end of the weekend to say, all right, you know, the party might be done for now and we need to be cautious of that. Do you with see these, this? With, with these ahead. stocks, I mean, we saw a lot of moves this week. I mean, and a lot of people were scratching their heads as to what was exactly going on from the internals. I mean, the traders start to see their screens flash and look at the momentum in these stocks and they're just sector agnostic. They see like canopies moving like this, like let's try to play it. Tilray's moving like this, let's try to jump on that, uh, jump on that wagon. Yeah, I mean, you know, the people try and look for the fundamental reason. You could say tax implications and all that, um, but for me, it's you know, if I see CGC doing this, then I'm looking at other names too, and and I'm putting capital. You know, who's going to be a laggard? All right, Tilray's got this key level, and so it just it's just an attractant for yeah. uh, volume and. You know, again, for me, it's just Canopy. Canopy is the leader right now on the Canadian side. And if it keeps going up, then it's that same mindset. But once it tops, then it's going to be that kind of mindset. And, you know, the big question will be, 
Do we get some rotation to the U.S. side, profit taking yeah. on Canada to the U.S., or does everything drop together? So that's what I'm watching very closely this coming week. Lots of volume, to say the least. Wasn't there 250 million? I think you'd said at one point Couple on Monday. Days. Couple yeah. days, it traded a quarter million, quarter million dollars worth of stock. Yeah. Well, the first two companies were the beneficiaries of news that basically finally that Germany, you know, came and ma basically made an announcement that uh, for sure adult use cannabis is now legalized. Another company that saw the benefits of that was Tilray. And would you see? So Tilray uh, had a, a key break today, but uh, no follow through at the moment. So on the weekly perspective, you can see it's just been this long, drawn out, tightening range. And yeah. we did break 254 and we did get to, you know, five month highs. So that's uh, a good start. But as I mentioned, you know, if, if Canopy starts daily consolidation, it doesn't matter that Tilray broke resistance. It's probably going to start daily consolidation as well. And mm -hmm. you can see this, this daily candle has that big upper wick. And so again, it's all about, you know, every day we go into the morning and saying, we got to break the high of the previous day as fast as possible to give confidence in continuation. And so now I'm on the other side of things on Monday. If we break the low of, of Thursday, that tells us, you know, things are shifting a little bit and we need to be patient. So if 240 were to break, I would then be patiently waiting and watching to see, you know, if we, we drop down to hourly oversold conditions and look for a daily higher low from hourly oversold conditions. But again, that would at least tell me stop being as aggressive a bull as you've been being over the last two weeks. Hmm. Interesting. Duly noted. Let's keep on the Canadian train. Next up, SNDL, who saw a lot of momentum from their earnings back on Thursday, March the 21st for the problem, major part of the week. But how did it close on Thursday? And again, what can we anticipate going into uh, tomorrow? So bigger picture, you can see it's very similar to Tilray. The big difference is, you know, this peak back to start the year was not nearly as significant. So we cleared it by a good bit. And you can see, yeah. again, just a, a quick comparison you know, it was a bigger bounce on Tilray, but we're not really clearing it the same way. So uh, it was weaker then and stronger now. But overall, the, the 236 level is the next major level for me. And we can see that's the highest level we've seen in uh, 52 weeks. So that's the 52-week high. Today was just a daily inside bar, you know, and it, it's the kind of move where some bulls got trapped a little bit just because you close strong on Tuesday, you get big follow through on Wednesday and you close at the high, like, all right, we're, we're rolling. We're looking for the same yeah. thing. And then you open significantly lower. So let's see, we closed 218 and we, in the high of the day, you know, two, not a huge drop, but 3% under that level and never get back. So again, it's just a little bit of a shift. That's enough for us to say, all right, daily consolidation is potentially shaping up here. And every time we start daily consolidation, again, I just want to keep reiterating, yeah. you just got to be cautious that it might be the, the slow bleed back down because that's what we've been getting time and time again without a headline. So if 199 breaks, I watch for hourly oversold conditions, a daily higher low will be most likely eventually. And bulls want to see if we do start that daily consolidation, if hourly oversold marks a daily higher low, then uh, that can continue the daily uptrend. But again, just patient in the short term because it looks like daily consolidation is shaping up. For us traders that are starting to learn these things, you bring up daily consolidation a number of times. How exactly if people are starting to learn this, how it works? And like you said, keep your eye on that. So just this easy pattern here, we got a what I call a stair step, which is just a higher low every single day. Yep. And so that's now five days in a row. And when that pattern breaks, We've got a pullback. Daily consolidation is then underway. So just imagine stairs. You're just going up. Yep. And now it's the pullback and you need that higher low. And we can say, all right, there's tons of space for it to form because it's anything above 140. We have all the space in the world. But we watch retracement size using Fibonacci retracements to help gauge if it's healthy or not. And I want to see as little retracement as possible. You know, if we can hold the 382 retracement, it's a potential bull flag. If we pull back, and get back half the move, then we're going to look to just tighten up for a long time. So we gauge what the retracement looks like. We gauge what the volume looks like and whether it's healthy daily consolidation or not. And again, it's the kind of thing where I can't predict what we're going to see. And that, that's yeah. why I say, you know, technical analysis is reacting, not predicting, because I'm going to be getting more information Monday and then Tuesday and then Wednesday. And that's going to help me gauge, is this healthy that's looking for continuation or is, is this the, the top of a longer term drawdown? Well said, and thank you for explaining that. Makes sense. Uh, let's now shift to the U.S. There is uh, obviously some anticipated news. Well, no news, really. The Supreme Court, they come up with their weekly comments, did not comment on cannabis. They now have until midnight 
tomorrow night, April 1st, on whether or not uh, adult use, they can comment on whether adult use will be added onto the ballot. So there's a lot of people looking at a number of players within the Florida market. So let's begin with one of the bigger players in the space, and that is Air Wellness, which is drawing a lot of attention among retail investors. Yep. So today it stood out, you know, I was, I'm glad to see that the Florida names had relative strength today because one of the moves that I made uh, when I reloaded some swing trades was going a bit heavier into true leave, uh, knowing that this was a, a shorter term dangling carrot that we had. And I was a bit cautious, you know, is this going to be a potential sell of a news event just because people already anticipated because, you know, DeSantis said it's going to be voted on that, but long story short, uh, no, it, it, we had some nice follow through. So, you know, these, these tier two names are, yeah. Are, they have some catching up to do or some they need to play some catch up here just because, you know, 409 where we came from is a long ways away. And it's a good sign to break 253 again, get to the highest level in over a month and just got to continue this this daily uptrend, this little stair step pattern. So we built a little support at 211 next daily consolidation that we see. We want to hold 211. Just keep keep these little higher lows forming to try and grind our way back up towards that 409 level because again without a headline without that fast shot up yeah uh, just just slow and steady you know you can't complain with that and where msos sits right now it's right near resistance again it's always like oh this would be perfect if we got the headline right now but, <laughs> right but even even the fact that we're just near it uh it definitely is is encouraging to to help bulls you know hold on a bit longer and, and hold out for that eventual hopeful headline we need headlines. You want to come to Washington with us in a week and a half? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, volatility is no stranger to this industry. And yes, it was for this case, for this next stock, which is Verano. It saw a bumpy week. It actually ended up, uh, I think, finished up marginally for the week. I think it was up a little over 2%. But what did you see going into the close and, again, heading into this week? A little bit of a sell-off into the close, giving back a good bit of the day's move. But again, we got to just keep these higher lows going. So 521 is key from here. It's a higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high. So just keep that going. 708 is the most important level. And uh, that is still a ways away. Again, I'm, I'm leaving the door open where, again, in the absence of a headline, it's entirely possible that we trade within a tightening weekly range. This next week is pretty key for me because – if it's a red week for the sector, we're going to have a lot of these tightening weekly ranges shaping up. Mm. And MSOS came pretty close this week to to knocking yeah. out that resistance and, and removing that from a possibility. But uh, it is still possible. Here's MSOS. And, you know, if we have a, a red week, it's possible we do one of these and tighten up. It was a good nice to see a close. It was nice to see a close at 10.01 on Friday. That's true. Yeah. Thursday, Thursday, Thursday with the holiday. But, yeah, can't complain. Yeah. Can't complain. Oh, Thursday, 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 yeah. You know, it's it's the same thing. It's these stair steps, these higher lows. So yeah. the most important support for me is now 903. Just hold 903 next pullback and keep that resistance within striking distance. Because if you lose these higher lows, again, that tightening weekly range is then on the table. So yeah. daily uptrend is our guide. Well, it wasn't a headline, but Earl Blumenauer, who commented on cannabis and the state of it all in the Congress hearing meeting about a week and a half ago, I think that actually had some influence on how these stocks performed the last week. But to your point, if we don't get an announcement, this starts to fade. And you need to be cautious, obviously, if this starts to turn red this week. But there is, like I said, coming up, the last company I want to bring up the next 24 hours, truly, which is the biggest Florida player. But uh, if there's no comments made, uh, it looks like all systems go that this will be included as far as adult use on the ballot come fall. So it'll be interesting to see how this performs this week. But what did you see and what are you seeing with True Leaf? So 11's a base and we have a nice, you know, double bottom down at that level, which held. So that's a good confidence builder for bulls. And, you know, this is the highest close that it's seen in a very long time. Highest close mm, yeah. in like 14 months or so, 15 months. So that's notable. And, you know, again, with these OTC names, you got to zoom in a little bit because the wicks, these upper wicks from, from Wednesday, these prices were not being hit. And, it, yeah. you know, I, it's just, it's, it's the OTC, it's these market makers. And so, you know, 1280, you look at the daily candle and someone would say, oh, well, we didn't break the high of, of Wednesday. But if you're watching it trade, those wicks weren't real on, on Wednesday. And, and yeah, we yeah. did break the high. So there's, you have to zoom in a little bit, which is an annoyance with these OTC names, yeah. but it's holding on great. And, you know, I'm watching the TCNNF divided by MSOS chart. And again, way back when we were watching on this show, one of these times got to break that level. And 
and that relative strength started to surge. And so what I'm looking for is, can this relative strength chart be a bull flag? And, you know, I'm, I'm always just watching True Lever or Green Thumb, who's the big daddy of the sector right yeah. now. And if you look at TCNNF divided by GTPIF, so we can do a bit of comparison, we can say that, you know, this is this is truly stronger. This is it weaker, stronger, a little bit weaker, definitely stronger today. So, you know, again, the question is, do we just keep this trend going or are things going to shift bigger picture? And right now it's it's uh, still looking good for truly as being the major player at the moment. Yeah, it's starting to separate itself from the industry and how it performs, don't you think? It is. And, you know, there's there's there was such a long time where, where Green Thumb was, you know, a year plus where it's just Green Thumb. And, you know, there was this the Kim Rivers husband drama and all that. And yeah. and we were dropping on that with relative weakness and truly. But again, just just the it just shows you the magnitude of what that Florida uh, approval would bring to this name. I mean, again, if, if you get a recreational vote, you get a, an easy one to two hundred percent. And so. Uh, that yeah. kind of risk reward setup. Again, you're gambling a little bit on what's the vote going to be and is it going to be on the ballot? We don't want to count that chicken before it hatches, but uh, it's just in terms of risk reward to have that, which you know you don't even you don't even need the the Fed to do or the DEA to do anything. If you've got that, like you're good to go as a stock if your if your setup is true leave. So it's almost like a safety net of like an extra catalyst. Mm -hmm. Which I know for me, you know. I, I love day trading, swing trading. I'm trying to get better at it. And I'm doing a good job of swing trading these U.S. cannabis names. But it helps me sleep at night knowing that that's a, another uh, little safety yeah. net. Yeah. 133 locations in the state of Florida. They are the big dog. Well, that's we're, not sure. even, we're not even talking about Pennsylvania or Ohio. I know. Um, we're just talking about their Florida business. That's the best part about Truly. Their Florida business from a valuation perspective insulates them from a lot yeah. if they get adult use. Anthony, remind me again, what's the approval rate for cannabis in the state of Florida? Like 60%. If this 60 okay. It's got to bust. It's got to bust 60% on the ballot. All right. Uh, that concludes cannabis. I know you wanted to bring up a few things regarding crypto, Anthony. So over to you. Uh, it's Bitcoin. Uh, obviously, it was a big week for Bitcoin. Love to hear Dan's thoughts on, uh, on what we're looking at chart wise. Yeah, the weekly is a standard bull flag. Bulls have no complaints with how this is shaping up. Uh, and again, you know, it ends up being a 20% pullback or so. But when you run up so hard, you know, 20% pullback, yeah. retracement size. Again, this is what I was talking about, where this is your ideal bull flag. You're holding this 382 retracement, which is 38% Fibonacci number. And if you hold that, you're going higher. And so uh, it looks great. We got a little daily bull flag trying to form. You know, you could make an argument. This is a little daily cup and handle trying to form. There's just no red flags whatsoever at this point. And really it's a scenario where, you know, worst case for the bulls, we got to chop around sideways for a bit to start April. But uh, again, there's, there's a lot of confidence right now. And uh, I'm, I'm definitely, you know, it, it gives us a new benchmark, the weekly time frame when you're running up, you know, where's our support. Yeah. We got nothing. Now we got a level. Okay. 60,000 is now our benchmark. If we're holding 60,000, the longer term trend is just fine. Yeah. Yeah. I'm curious to see what we do going into the halving as which it should be about three weeks away. So yeah, going into that coming. event, we might see hundred K nothing's, uh, nothing's impossible. Wow. Takes me back to that interview that you did with <laughs> Kevin O'Leary 15 months ago in New York with the whole FTX fiasco. And there was so much Bitcoin was at 12 Bitcoin was at 12 K. I think when wow. we did that, when we did, was it, was it about, yeah, it was about 12 or 15. We did that interview. Yeah. I remember him saying, Kevin O'Leary, I just, I, I need a break. I need to go on a holiday break. Yeah. But uh, those were yeah. some challenging days. But wow, it's come roaring back. Here we are 15 minutes or 15 minutes, 15 months later. Uh, okay, Dan, that wraps things up, obviously, for this week. One thing I'll leave you with, I can't believe here we are, the end of April uh, or, or end of March already and 90 days into the books. What do you, um, I know you do a lot of like short-term thinking strategies when it comes to this space right now, but are you looking at how this Q2 will perform? You know, there's a lot of pending stuff. Like, do we get an announcement? Do we not get an announcement? But how are you preparing yourself over the next, say, 30, 60 days pertaining to this industry? Yeah, so I'm, I'm keeping my core swing positions because, again, the, the prices are doing what I want them to do in the absence of the headline. And obviously, a lot of, you know, that is due to the anticipation. Uh, but it's, it's a pretty important, you know, the summer in general, going back to my 13 years of trading cannabis in general, you sell in the summer and it's a slow bleed and it's boring. Yeah. And then, you know, end of summer into a voting season, 
that's when you start paying attention. And so I'm really hoping we can get this uh, schedule three headline to try and offset some of that, because I know I personally will not be holding, you know, any kind of sizable swing positions. If we do start a slow bleed, good news is we're not seeing any sign of that at the moment, but uh, you know, that we also have the broader market is just still in euphoria mode. I mean, the, the S and P 500, I talked about stair steps. It's had a higher low every single week for 12 weeks in a row. Wow. And we're, we're approaching historical, you know, you look back a hundred years and I think there's only two other times where it was maybe one or two weeks more than this. And so, you know, I, I call it a melt up because it's definitely a melt up right say, now. But it, it's also, say, is it, can you call it a melt up? Oh yeah. It's a, a melt. Yeah. I've never seen anything like this. I've never seen a four yeah. month window do anything like this. And so, you know, it, that always that's in the back of my mind saying, okay, well, even if the broader market pulled back 10% big picture, it would still be just fine. How would this sector respond if that were to happen? And so I'm just keeping in mind, we're in a very risk on mindset in the market right now, and that can change, but uh, it hasn't changed yet. And, you know, let's, let's see how long this melt up can continue. I am not fighting these bulls. No. It's funny how there's a lot of misconceptions out there about the Biden administration and how the market is just not what it once was when Trump was in office. But to your point, the last 12 weeks, uh, those are pretty telling signs, right? Yeah. And I mean, you can point to zero day options, expirations, or the fact that it's a, a an election year. I don't, I don't care about any of that. All I care about is the yeah. straight up move where it is, <laughs> uh, you know, I, there's, it's, it's just jaw dropping to a, to a certain degree. I remember a couple of years ago, I was speaking to a few guys at the CSC and they were saying on average amongst the top five MSOs, it was around 30 million in trade volume. And if, and when it does get listed onto the big board exchanges in uh, New York, you can anticipate anywhere between three and 500 million in daily volume. And uh, one can only fathom that those days do come, but first step, let's get the announcement until then be cautious. And if we don't get the announcement, what do they say? Sell in May and go away. Is that the term? Yeah, pretty, pretty close. Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll see. Uh, it's yeah, and and that's another thing. It's you know, it's a big difference between locking in profit and going short. And so, yeah. Yeah. you know, when whenever you're in euphor euphoria, never a bad idea to take a little bit off the table. As usual, log on to find out more information. Chartguys.com. Your YouTube channel is Chart Guys, and follow you on Twitter. What's your Twitter handle? At Chart Guys. Awesome. Well, thank you, sir. Enjoy the rest of your Easter weekend, and we'll check back in with you on Friday. In the meantime, Anthony, enjoy the rest of your weekend as well. Too. And uh, we'll see you on the live stream tomorrow at 4. Thanks, guys. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Hey, everyone. Thanks for watching. And if you want to learn more about the emerging industries that we cover, then leave a comment below and let us know who you want us to interview, the questions you want asked, and the information that you want to learn. We want to hear from you. As usual, click on that bell for all notifications to get the latest information. Share this video with your network. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel because we would not be here without.